Boris Johnson has had a dreadful couple of weeks. The Sue Gray report criticised him for a failure of leadership. And then last Monday, 148 of his MPs voted no confidence in him as Conservative leader. Both have made him appear as a sitting duck, ready to be toppled. But a shock poll this weekend gave him cause for hope. That's because despite everything, the public still seem to prefer him to the only alternative. According to opinion, 28% of the public think Boris Johnson would make the best prime minister. Only 26% think Keir Starmer would. 35% said none of the above. Another polling firm, JL Partners, also released polling results which might concern Keir Starmer. They asked a representative sample of 2,000 people to describe the Labour leader. And this is what they came up with. Boring is the big (laughs) word. Bang in the middle. Boring. What might be the consolation to Keir Starmer is you've got honest above that, which is, uh, you know, reasonably big. Obviously, the bigger the word, the more often it appeared in people's um, responses. I think what they do is, you know, it's not multiple choice. They get them to sort of type a couple of sentences and then they they pick out words which are used often. So you've got boring, honest, then you've got untrustworthy, dull, useless and weak, idiot, trustworthy, but trustworthy is quite a lot smaller than untrustworthy. Posh is rather small. Tosser and Pratt are reassuringly small. Cock is tiny, so we can take some consolation in that. There were some more unhelpful headlines for Keir Starmer today. He's being investigated by the Parliamentary Commissioner for Standards over late declarations of some football tickets and royalties from a book. One was declared one month late, the other was declared a day late. These are not, it sort of goes without saying, they're not very serious breaches. And his spokesman has said this. Keir Starmer takes his declaration responsibilities very seriously and has already apologised for the fact that administrative errors in his office have led to a small number of late declarations. Now, I have every faith that Keir Starmer does take his declarations fairly seriously. So I'm not, I'm not particularly um, concerned about those breaches. Ash, what do you make of the mind map? Not the mind map, the word word cloud. This is a word cloud, isn't it? Mm, I mean, I'm not sure that you would call it reassuring that Keir Starmer's cock was tiny there. Tiny cock, slightly bigger dick. Slightly bigger dick. I think when it comes to the breaches of reporting expenses and gifts, you're right. It's not the crime of the century, right? These are really administrative errors. And I don't think it's anything that in itself uh, should be considered reputationally damaging. But the problem for Keir Starmer is that he has made almost the bureaucratic practice of politics his main dividing line between himself and Boris Johnson. So any sort of breach of little rules or perhaps ones as we've seen with Beergate, it closes that distance. And even if the breaches themselves aren't really a big deal, the headlines kind of contribute to the sense of, well, politicians are all the same, aren't they? And I think that that's something which weakens Keir Starmer's position because when he finds himself in that place, who wants to fight for him? Nobody really. The Labour right viewed him as a useful means of marginalising the party's left, and they were correct in that assessment. The commentariat, who have now sort of in one voice said, oh my God, this guy actually isn't particularly forensic or particularly good at politics. Um, They only sort of inflated his ego uh, and his currency amongst uh, you know, the the many writers and editors of Punditland, because again, he was a useful tool with which to marginalize the left. And his party grassroots, the rank and file, the membership, they don't want to fight for him because they're like, hang on, buddy, you got elected as leader on the basis of a campaign, which turned out to be entirely duplicitous. You've turned your back on multiple pledges. You've distanced yourself uh, from the campaign that you ran on. And yeah, you lied to us. So for me, the key question for Keir Starmer is who believes in you enough to fight for you? Because when you are subject to bad faith smears, as he was with the Jimmy Savile stuff, uh, when he's subject to a kind of choreographed press operation, as with the beer gate, curry gate stuff, and you know, when there's sort of headlines making out that something is worse than it is, as with these breaches, who wants to stick up for him? Nobody, apart from his spokesperson. 
All of us here at Navarra Media are working harder than ever to keep scrutinizing establishment politicians and the media barons who protect them. We don't have billionaire funders. We don't have advertising partnerships. We're funded entirely by you. If you've ever thought about supporting us, now's the time to go to navarramedia.com slash support and donate anything you can from just one pound per month. Defy the corporate media, join our monthly supporters and help build our supporter base to 10,000 strong.